Today, I'm adding a Las Vegas team to the NBA. We got the Las Vegas Flamingos. And the first thing that's going to happen once we add this squad to the NBA is there's going to be an expansion draft where we're going to be able to select the players that other teams have chosen to get rid of for the draft. So this is going to be an opportunity essentially for us to get a jump start as a team and add some decent talent. So let's get straight into it and see who's available to us at the expansion draft. Now teams are going to get to protect whoever they want and it looks like there's some solid players who are going to be available. You got Drew Holiday, Zach Levine is available, Malcolm Brogdon, Jeremy Grant. So there's some decent pieces. Brad Beal, I mean come on now, Jalen Duran. Oh we're about to have an absolute squad here in Vegas. Now there's not any other teams joining the league with me. I actually had this idea. To somebody said I should add six expansion teams to the league and I was thinking it'd be crazy if I rebuilt all the expansion teams at once I thought that'd be kind of fun so let me know if y'all would want me to see or if y'all would want to see me rebuild six teams at once I think it'd be crazy the ultimate goal for that type of video would be for me to get all six teams as the top six teams in the league I think that could be super fun and I actually really want to do that pretty soon so that might be a rebuild coming soon for the channel but yeah we're just gonna pick up some of these guys I'm not really putting too much thought into it I'm just selecting some of the best overall players although I really wish I didn't just select Gordon Hayward his contract is uh you know quite big but yeah we're done with the NBA draft our last pick was Uncle Jeff and now our squad is all put together so I'm thinking what I'm probably going to do for this first season is just simulate up to the deadline, see how we're doing, and we're actually doing really well. The same thing happened to me when I added Las Vegas back to the league and did a rebuild. We were going crazy to start off. I don't know why, but whenever you get these expansion teams, like they just start playing really well. I don't think our team's incredibly good. I mean, we have a decent little rotation for sure, but I didn't really even think about it that much. And right now, we're 14-3. and three. We're the hottest team in the league, and and we were just we were just added to the league it's our first day out here all right so right now we're the three seed and imagine how crazy it would be if we won a championship in our first year as a franchise so you know what I'm gonna make that happen by any means possible but actually it's probably gonna be better if I simulate to like February 6 right because free game let me tell y'all if you're doing your 2k rebuilds one thing you want to do if you're trying to get the best talent possible is simulate right before the deadline because then there's gonna be more teams that are selling or rebuilding meaning that more talent will be available I've traded for Steph Curry doing that so just trust me on this it really does work. So that's what I'm going to do. Speaking of Steph, man, did y'all see that Warriors L last night? I'm not going to lie to y'all. I didn't see it live because I was watching. It was the fourth quarter. And they went on a nice little run. I think they hit a couple threes. And then like Pajemski had a layup. It went into the timeout, right? And they were up by like 17, not much time left. And I had like a voice telling me in the back of my head, oh, they're going to blow this lead. But I was like, I'm too tired. I'm going to bed, right? I wake up and what do you know it, Jokic did his best Steph Curry impression, hit a three from deep and went ahead and won the game for the Denver Nuggets. But now we're near the deadline and checking out Team Intel, of course. Oh my gosh, we're negative almost 200 million. That is insane. That that That's crazy. But you see, the Clippers, they don't have any untouchables right now. Do we want any of the Clippers players? Not really, but that that's just something to consider. Giannis, he's still untouchable. So is Embiid. The Warriors have Curry is untouchable. They're buyers. The Timberwolves, they're selling. Ant-Man is not an untouchable. And I mean, Anthony Edwards, he would be a great piece. The, the Spurs, they're selling. And Wembenyama is available. So low-key, we might try to explore that because that's Victor Wembenyama. You know what I mean? Kate Cunningham is available. You've got Tyrese Halliburton available. So y'all see there's some great options out there. And we're just going to get started on trying to make some trades. Now, we're in financial peril right now. And when you're over the hard cap, it's pretty difficult to make trades in this game so I'm not exactly sure how many options are going to be available to me but we'll see how this goes I mean I could get Rudy Gobert for Gordon Hayward and since we don't really care about money at this point we're over the hard cap by like a trillion dollars anyway why, why don't we go get Rudy Gobert we need a nice little starting center actually we don't really you know what Rudy you, you can go we'll trade Rudy in a first round or see if we can get anybody crazy yeah not too many offers available so I might have to get in my own bag and try to make my own custom trade and y'all know how much I would love to have Tyrese Hall Halliburton here in uh where are we Las Vegas I'd love to have him here 
But the only problem is because we're like over 90 mil over the hard cap or around 90 mil over the hard cap, it's going to be difficult to match salary in a move. So I don't know if the Halley trade is one we can do because as you can see, we got to match like dollar for dollar with other teams when we're making trades. So that's going to make it difficult, but I'm still going to keep trying. But because of that, I'm probably going to mostly use trade finder because I, I just don't want to turn into a mathematician to make some 2k trades. We'll go get Jalen Brunson and uh, Mitchell Robinson. And then I'm thinking some of these guys at the end of the rotation, it'd be nice if we can move them for like some first round picks like Buddy Heald. We can get a first rounder for him. That'd be nice. We're also kind of, you know, getting out of a bit of the financial trouble we're in right now because, oh my goodness, our team is incredibly expensive. There's another first rounder. That's good. We can use that in another trade. So one thing I'm noticing is we have way too many centers and looking at what we need positionally, let, let me just see where we're at. We're, we're low key deep at every spot, but we, which I guess means I can kind of just do whatever I want. I'll do Mitchell Robinson, Nas Reed in a first, just see who pops up here. I was hoping there would be some better players, but unfortunately there wasn't. We could try JB and two first, see if anybody like insane pops up in the trade finder here. I'm not really seeing anybody who would be a crazy needle mover for us or anybody better than Brunson so that's probably not the move for the team we could look at Levine just see what's out there Levine two first rounders I mean we got plenty of picks to work with here might as well try and use them we could get Carl Anthony Towns but Levine he's averaging 18 for us in Las Vegas so he's not a guy who I'm too too willing to part ways with at this point in time we got Brogdon if we could get a better backup two guard that that would definitely be interesting I see Draymond yeah, man. And the problem is our financial situation, bro. We're, we're in such a weird spot. But I'll go get Clax. I know we have a lot of big men on the team right now. But what I'm thinking is we can keep Gobert and Clax as our two bigs. Or no, actually we keep Duran and Clax as our two bigs. And then we trade Gobert along with a first and try to get a decent little two guard because we just traded away uh, a shooting guard we could get Fred Van Vliet Van Vliet's fine we'll slide Freddie V over to the two guard he can't really play that and that makes sense he's six foot nothing that's ridiculous man I'm taller than you <laughs> but he's in the NBA and I'm not I'm just I'm just joking around man but if y'all didn't know, I'm about about six two, maybe maybe six three in vapor maxes. So you know, you know, I'm I'm really a tall guy out here. That's not to flex though. I can't even dunk. So so it doesn't really matter for real. Anyway, we got Nas Reed on the team. I'd like to trade him for a power forward that we can trust. We could move Nas over to the four. I guess that could also be an option. Jaden McDaniels is out there. Obi Toppin. Let, let's go get Obi. Get a high flyer here in Vegas, and that that helps the rotation a little bit. We don't have uh, enough small four forwards on the team right now is Tim Hardaway Jr. really our only small forward on the squad and we have too many power forwards so we could do like DFS, Rui, and a first and see if anybody decent pops up for us. I mean there's Miles Bridges but you know uh, yeah yeah I'm just not taking the Miles Bridges trade with all due respect or, or well with all due respect is that the right phrase to say about Miles Bridges? And anyway we're not doing the Miles Bridges trade we could throw uh, Obi Toppin at the three and that that'll be fine we'll have Rui play some four for us and then oh the rotation still isn't the way I want it to be man man our team is just too deep low-key we, we just got too much depth uh, I guess the problem is we need a backup four so we could do like Mitchell Robinson and power forward sure and then we're all good to go the rotation looks green which is awesome we got all 80 plus players really deep squad so we'll just simulate and hopefully we win a championship so after those moves, we did even better. We went 60 and 22 on the season. Big things in Vegas. Jalen Brunson came in and was like our guy. He was the score, the go-to option for the team. So that was huge for us. I really like that we were able to add him. Levine, great score for the team. Drew Holiday. I mean, just look at the squad, man. So many great players on the team. In round number one, we're taking on Phoenix, coming out of the play-in tournament, and we actually beat them in six. All right. Round number two, we got the Pels. And in these playoffs, let me, let me tell y'all what I'm hoping for. I know a lot of people have been requesting that I get into the games more, you know, watch some of the gameplay. So I want to go through these playoffs a little bit slower to see if we get any close series. We end up absolutely cooking the uh, Pelicans, but 
now we've got the Grizz. And I mean, imagine the new Las Vegas team going at the Grizzlies. That that would be some cool gameplay to watch. And I know people have been requesting that. So I'm hoping we get some close series. But right now, well, we're kind of frying the league. Now we got the Pacers in the NBA Finals. Interesting to see them here in year number one. Game one's going to go to us. Game two is going to go to us. Game three to Indiana. Game four to Indiana. Here we go. Big game five coming up. Series all tied up. This is a momentum shifter for the team. And it looks like we're going to take it in dominant fashion. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Indiana. Oh, my gosh. They came back. All right. We got a close one. About three minutes to go. Usually on, on the main channel, I wait till there's like two minutes. But I, I, I know y'all do not get much gameplay. So I want to be sure we get a close game that we can watch. Here. Had to take a sip of water before we got started, bro. I'm not trying to get parched mid uh, mid game. All right, here we go. We're down by five points here, a little over three minutes to go. Nas Reed inbounding the ball. It's going to go into TJ McConnell. McConnell in the corner, defended by Brunson, and he's going to go up with it, get rejected by Clax. That's exactly what we needed. Jalen Brunson is now bringing out the ball. We're moving in transition. These jerseys are kind of fire. They all got the pink leg sleeves on, too. Okay, the Flamingos. Beautiful pass down to Jalen Duran for the and one. That's huge. All right, man. Jalen, we're going to need these free throws out of you. First one for Jalen Duran on the and one is good. He only had one free throw. I'm talking about first one like there's going to be another one. Okay, we're within two points here. Less than three minutes to go. Tyrese Halliburton is bringing up the basketball. Halley going to get the screen from Brown. Brown going to get the ball. Now it goes over to Nesmith in the corner. Aaron Nesmith going to give it over to Matherin. Matherin wide open, and he misses. We got bailed out there. Drew Holiday is able to grab the rebound. Holiday going to swing it over to Bruce or Brunson. Brunson, oh my gosh, is he going to step out? It looked like he was walking that line. Brunson to the basket, and he misses the floater. Miles Turner secures the rebound. Now it's going to go up to Ben Matherin. Matherin had some room on the three, but he's not going to pop it. Now he's defended by Duran. Duran has a size advantage here. He swings it over to Nesmith. Aaron going to the basket. He gives it over to Halley. Halley has some room, and he misses. We're able to secure the rebound. Team's going brick for brick right now, but we need one. Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson has it. He's going to get the screen from Clax, but he's not using it. JB ISO went on Matherin. He's at the basket here. He fakes. He's going to put it up, and he misses. We're not able to secure the offensive rebound. Ever since that Jalen Duran and one, we just haven't been able to score. Halley has the basketball. He's defended by John Collins. Halliburton going to swing it over to Matherin. Matherin going to slow things down here. He has the mismatch on Brunson, but he's going to swing it over to Nesmith. Nesmith over to Bruce Brown. Brown with time winding down, gives it over to Miles Turner. Turner posting up, and he's going to have to pull a heavily contested, and he hits it. Oh my goodness, Miles Turner just using the size advantage, I guess, to shoot over his man and knock down a big, big mid-range jumper. Now Jalen Brunson has it. We need an answer here. JB, really good point guard, really clutch. So we need something out of him. He's going to swing it over to Holiday. Holiday, ball fakes, gets the screen from Duran. He's going to pop the mid-range and hit it. Big shot from the veteran, Drew Holiday, two-way player. He has seven points in the fourth quarter. Absolutely huge stuff from him. Halliburton now has it at the top of the key. He's defended by JB. Halley going to slow things down here. You got to watch out for him. He is elite. He can get his teammates a shot or get a shot himself. He's going to go to Turner. Turner misses the layup, and now we get the rebound. Down by two points here. We still need to score. John Collins going to slow it down a bit, get the ball to Brunson. Brunson going to work on Halliburton. He's going to fake, put up the layup, and miss, but Duran gets the board. Out to Collins. Duran should have put it back up, but instead, we're going to reset here. Brunson in the corner. Now he has the open midi. Oh my my goodness, Brunson is selling, bro. I promise you, if we lose in these finals, you're getting traded. Bruce Brown bringing up the basketball. Oh, I thought I thought Holiday had the steal, but instead, Bruce Brown is going to the line. Dude, I thought for sure Holiday had ripped that away. That sucks. Bruce Brown going to the foul line. First one is cash, of course. All right, Bruce Brown, second free throw. We need him to miss this one, but he knocks it down. So we're down by four points, 27 seconds to go. Not exactly a great spot to be in right now, but hopefully we can pull off something, make something big happen in the clutch. We, we need a big play, and I don't know if Brunson's our guy to deliver on it. I thought he was going to be a good piece for the team, but in this hopping game, man, it's been ugly. Ball goes to Levine. Levine over to Collins. Now it goes to Holiday. Back to Collins. We're playing hot potato. It finally gets to Jalen Brunson. He spins. Brunson going to pull the mid-range. He's trash. 
he is trash, bro. He, he's so terrible. I, I can't even watch anymore. I, I don't understand what he's doing, bro. You're, you're trash. Like, actually, bro, well, what's going on? You see the stats, the way they dropped off in the playoffs? I thought Brunson was a guy I can trust, but obviously he isn't. What happened, JB? What happened? All right, we're down three to two. We want to force game seven here, of course, to keep our season alive and everything. We're off to a pretty good start. We've still got the lead. Just hold on. Hold on. We're good. Oh, wow. And we're blowing it. Guys, we're blowing it. It's close again in the fourth. And y'all said y'all want more gameplay. I got y'all today. We're actually tuning in to these big games. Let's get into it. We need this one. Down by five points is not a good spot to be in, but I mean, there's still plenty of time to go. About three minutes left. Halliburton has the ball defended by Levine. Halley short jumper is good. Oh my gosh, man. Halliburton starting to piece us up in the clutch. He's got eight points in the, oh, I thought that said eight points in the fourth, but it was points in the paint. And now we're going to call a timeout. How many do we have left? Oh, we got a good amount. Sometimes, bro, in 2K, the CPU team, bro, they just start burning timeouts in the clutch when there's no need to, but... Luckily, we're still holding on to a good amount of them. Claxton, he has the ball. He's going to inbound it to Drew Holiday. It goes to Brunson, who's wide open. This man is terrible. This man is terrible. Like, like actually, 15 points, 6 of 12, 1 of 6. What is going on? You're supposed to be our team leader. We traded for you to be the leader. We trusted you. Halliburton has the ball. Halley gets the screen from Nas Reed. Oh, we traded Nas Reed. Don't let this be the Reed revenge series. He misses that one. Collins grabs the rebound. It goes up to Drew Holiday. Drew, I swear, do not give the ball. Oh, great. Here we go again. Jalen Brunson with the basketball. Here comes the screen. We're just waiting for the brick. Goes up. He's blocked. What a surprise. The, like actually he's playing like a third grader in the clutch like what is going on right now DeAndre Hunter inbounding the ball do not don't do it don't do it DeAndre please oh you might be traded too just because you gave it into this guy Jalen Brunson working uh he's gonna get the screen over to Holiday please Drew uh, uh, this whole team sucks oh my goodness what is going on right now Tyrese Halliburton has it Halley working on Jalen Brunson the other problem is Jalen Brunson is six foot nothing he, he's got no type of height to defend with either and that's a problem. It's going to go over to Turner. Oh, let's go, Clax. Good defense. It goes back to Halliburton. Halley going to put it up over uh, Little Brunson, but luckily he misses it. DeAndre grabs the rebound. Come on, Hunter. We need a big play out of you. Oh, great. Here we go. Jalen Brunson has the basketball. JB going to swing it over to Drew Holiday. Holiday has it. He, he's not doing anything. He's not going anywhere. Oh, my goodness. Th this team is trash. I am so sorry y'all have to watch this. Jalen Brunson down to Claxton. Clax working on Turner layup is off <sighs> like this is actually so bad we 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 can't play we're terrible how do we make it all the way to the finals do y'all see the way this team is playing in the clutch how, how do we make it here Halliburton gonna swing it over to Matherin if we don't get a stop here I'm getting out of this game happily because I do not want to watch this team anymore everybody's traded if Halliburton hits this shot he misses Collins grabs the rebound I promise y'all Jalen Brunson is gone the first chance we get. JB bringing up the ball, defended by Halliburton. He gets to the basket. Oh my goodness, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. He scored. He scored. All right, we're within five. Put together some stops. Stay cool, calm, collected. We'll, we'll be good to go. Tyrese Halliburton, defended by Brunson. Uh, yeah, we're just going to wait for the screen to come. They basically run the same play every single time. There it goes. Screen. Halliburton pulls the three. He misses. We get the rebound. Come on, guys. This is our our chance drew holiday bringing up the basketball over to john collins now it goes back to brunson well our chance is over jb to the basket and what a surprise he missed he might be the worst player in nba history he's traded the, the whole team really might be traded I, that that was just a terrible showing oh my goodness that was awful to watch so we're going to lose in the NBA Finals. You know what? I didn't expect us to make it this far, so that is an achievement in and of itself. But we've got a lot of work to do now. A lot of changes that need to be made. A big problem, we're over the hard cap right now, which means some of our free agents we just simply cannot afford to bring back. But I think I want to make this team a lot cheaper this offseason. You know what? We might really pack everybody up. I'm tired of all these fraudulent players. Fred Van Vliet, you're making $40 million. How many points you average? 12? Yeah, 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 you can go. You can go. I'm thinking a good way to approach this could be to try and get some high picks. Like, give me pick nine and Jaden Springer. That works. And also trading away all these players. 
can create trade exceptions. I explained that a lot in the previous video, but essentially what it'll allow me to do is take on additional salary without sending out more. So I can take on almost 39 million more than I sent out using that Fred Van Vliet trade exception. So that's gonna be huge in the future when we try to make moves, and it's essentially gonna be what carries us to winning a championship next year. I can almost guarantee you all we win a championship next year because I'm that confident in my abilities to build a great basket basketball team we're we're locked in right now that's what i'm saying so we're gonna trade away a lot of these overpaid old men on my basketball team and then we're gonna move from there and don't think i forgot about Jalen brunson i, I remembered i remembered every single brick every single time he, he played trash for us he, he's gone i, I promise y'all he, he's not gonna be on the team but for now we kind of got to hold on to him and let me explain why if we keep JB for a little bit longer, right, and we trade him around the deadline, the offers are going to be sensational. So that, that's what we're waiting for. For now, I want to trade up in the draft. I saw San Antonio had number one, so we're going to go straight to San Antonio and talk to him. They can't afford Levine's salary, but it's pretty close. So y'all throw me Devontae Graham, and we're good to go there. I can also give y'all, ooh, we got the ninth pick via Toronto. I forgot we even traded for that. You know what? I'll send that y'all's way. I'm feeling generous today. They're still going to say no. I'll give y'all 20 as well and I'll throw y'all a first rounder via Utah oh man they really want to hold on to this one don't they I'll throw y'all a second and it is done we get the number one overall pick actually am I done yet am I done yet though because I also want to get off of uh who else's contract I don't want DeAndre Hunter's contract I don't really want Rui's contract can we trade for number two as well who's got it Milwaukee oh no nah, they can't take on all that salary but what we can do is we can flip Rui for some uh some, for some draft picks right so yeah what we can do is head over to oh yeah philly give me b-ball pull and a first round pick that works then we take dfs we should be able to get a first rounder for dfs fairly easily oh, okay i might be wrong you know what we'll take matisse Thibel, and then i bet we'll be able to trade matisse for a first round pick or at least that that's what i'm banking on yep there you go there's two first for our guy matisse then we take deandre hunter dj you you've been solid for us i think actually you haven't been so so you know what it, I, we're, we're gonna trade you is basically what i'm saying uh anyway andrew wiggins we're, we're good wigs uh, oh man did y'all see how uh kuminga was mad i know i was talking a little bit about the warriors earlier but Kuminga's frustrated with his role, and I don't blame him. They, they, He was having a good game, and Steve Kerr was like, nah, we're going to bench you so Andrew Wiggins can lay some more bricks. Like, 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 what's going on in Golden State, man? It's getting ugly, and I know Steve Kerr. He's a coach who's done so much for Golden State, and I'm not saying fire, and him, fire him or anything. I, I know that's probably not something they would even consider, right? But I think he... I, at, at the very least, needs to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I, maybe this team isn't the best team, but he also has to do some different things with the rotation, maybe switch some things up, because clearly what they're doing right now isn't working. You can't start old man statue on defense, Chris Paul, alongside Steph Curry with Klay Thompson at the three. That You just, you can't do that. It, it's not it's not 2012 anymore, man. That, that That's basically the bottom line. It's not 2015 anymore. This isn't the same Klay Thompson. This isn't the same Chris Paul that's what I think Steve Kerr really needs to wrap his head around and he's he needs to stop starting players based on what they've done and start and uh start starting players based on what they're doing if that makes sense because yes, Chris Paul has done a lot in the league. Yes, Klay Thompson has done a lot in the league. Andrew Wiggins, he was great for the Warriors when they won a championship, right? But now, Wiggins just isn't playing that great of basketball. So you have to look in the mirror and say, you know what? Wiggs isn't playing that good. Let, let's change something here. Can we trade Wiggins? Can we play him less minutes and give a young guy like Kuminga, who in the opportunities he's been given, has shown a lot of great stuff? Why wouldn't they give him some more opportunities on the team considering that when he gets those opportunities he, he's really good all right we'll throw them all these picks and they're still not giving me two you know what that's fine we'll, we'll just take number one we'll get ron holland and we'll keep it pushing i've traded away like half the team this offseason i'm just now realizing that i was so locked in on my rant uh drew holiday accepts his player option i don't necessarily want drew holiday
Holiday on my basketball team. If I could get a role player who's like a little bit cheaper, that, that would be nice. Walker Kessler's perfect. Oh, sensational. We'll take Walker Kessler and then team options, we're taking those. Qualifying offers, Obi will extend that his way. And then for free agents, we got Kawhi. Did Bron retire? Did Bron? Oh, Bron left the game. That's crazy. But now we're going to have money to pursue players like Kawhi Leonard. We could even go after a Paul George if we wanted to. It looks like Kawhi, he's a little bit interested, but maybe if we throw him some more money, he'll be even more interested. So let, let me talk to Kawhi. Where's he at on this list? There he is. And we'll just throw him as much as we can. $48 million plus a player option. You're not getting that no trade clause, though. I can promise you that. And we're his number one offer. We'll also throw an offer Maxi's way because we can afford both. We really have it like that. We went from being in a financial peril with that hard cap to being in a great spot now. Oh my gosh, we have so many players. But uh, Maxi, he's not going to sign with us. We are going to be able to land Kawhi Leonard on the team, which is incredible. And then we still got the bird rights on some of our guys. Okay, no, we don't. Oh, Clax left. Oh, that sucks. Actually, I, I might have dropped the ball here. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all. I might have dropped the ball. Bro, I should have brought back Clax. We had the money to do it, but I am going to bring back Obi Toppin, and then maybe we can bring in like uh, Tyus Jones. I, I, I don't know. I guess that'll be what we do. Obi Toppin wants to go to the Lakers. That's fine. We'll match, and we get uh, Tyus Jones as well. We're also, oh, we don't have a mid-level. That sucks. Uh, we could do Andre Drummond, though. Or we have some money. We got like five mil. We'll throw that Andre Drummond's way, and then we'll keep it pushing. But y'all saw when we were on the free agency screen, all the those uh, trade exceptions we had, trust me, that's going to be what builds out literally almost this entire roster. That that's how that was my plan going into this. That was how we're going to put this whole thing together. So yeah, that, that that's the plan. Hopefully it works out. We'll get to the season. I'm going to slide Kawhi to the three. That way he's a 90, and we'll see how things go. But like I said, we're really going to put everything together at the deadline. It's going to be crazy. All right, so we're not even doing as bad as I thought. We're approaching January, and we're actually pretty good. So now, now once we make all these moves, oh, man, trust me, it, it's going to be crazy. Because remember, let me just show y'all. Let me, let me just show y'all all the draft picks that we have to work with. I, I mean, come on. Come, come on. Come on. Oh, my mic fell. Oh, come on, man, though. It's going to be crazy once we make these trades. This might be one of the best teams I put together. Just trust me. I'm getting so excited just thinking about it. All right, here we go. It's time to lock in. We're around the beginning of February, so let's get into it. We're at February 1st. So Kawhi Leonard, let, let me see what numbers he's putting up. I, I don't really care, quite frankly, but I, uh, yeah, the numbers aren't that good. So what we're going to do is take Kawhi to first. We should get some crazy offers. Damon Middleton, already a great start. Do we get anybody better than that? No? Okay. Okay, okay. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was expecting a little bit better. But what if we do JB and two first rounders? Is that going to get us and anybody insane? One of those picks has a lot of value too. Oh, man. Nobody's throwing me the offers I would have hoped. I was gassing it up like I was going to I, I was gonna do some crazy things. But it, it's not really looking like I, I might not be able to do what I was anticipating. But we'll check the uh, selling and rebuilding teams. And then we'll move from there. So you got the Blazers. They're selling. They don't have anything I really want anybody I want Anthony Edwards though Ant-Man he, he's the piece we need I was talking about him last year but we were having the issues with the with the hard cap and everything but now that that's not an issue and actually we could acquire Ant-Man without even trading any of our major pieces I think the way we do this is we take uh you know what Ron Holland he was the former first overall pick and then we have all these trade exceptions we can use we throw just first rounders on first rounders in here we'll give y'all your own pick right back and, and maybe we can we can call it a deal here i got four first for y'all i got enough room for one more i got one more in me let's see what they say boom all right we got ant man Th this is going to be sensational all right ant man is on the team we're, we're already off to a great start here and trust me there's a lot more i can do another player i want to look at is hallie untouchable over in indiana okay he is he is i mean they just won a championship with him that makes sense i'm not gonna lie i haven't had the best experiences trading for like kd or book and it looks like they're actually not available this time so uh you know that's not really an option right now 
But I was going to say I might try to trade for them. Looks like that's not a thing I can do. Clippers are selling. They don't have any players I really want. You got the Grizzlies. Ja is not available. I mean, we could talk to the Hawks about Trey Young potentially. Jimmy Butler. Ooh, LaMelo is available. We'll probably end up talking to the Hornets about LaMelo Ball. Let me start putting together a list here. So we'll take LaMelo potentially on the team. Lakers. Anthony Davis isn't available. Paolo, he's not available. Okay, we've pretty much gone through the whole list. So it's a pretty under overwhelming pool of talent compared to what I was looking for but you know what we can still make something shake with the players that are available right now Charlotte Hornets LaMelo Ball he he could be a guy for us and I think he'll probably be pretty easy to get if we just do Brunson and like some first that's probably gonna oh yeah there, there you go all right LaMelo Ball is on the team we got Kawhi as well do we want to keep Kawhi around I don't really know is he is he a piece we look to move off of with the million first round picks try and improve there I know we had an offer earlier that involved uh I, who was it it was like dame and somebody else but that's not on the table anymore we could get trey and dejounte which you know I, i'm gonna do real quick because then we can uh i mean yeah we got a lot of guards on the team we could probably play Ant at small forward even play lamella actually yeah yeah because yeah. lamella's got size so we'll play him at small forward dejounte is going to be back up for us i think and then i want to get a good center let, let me see who else available out there? I know that these top guys are going to be untouchable, but like a poor Zingas, he, he's kind of like exactly what I'm looking for. So we do Tyus Jones and then and then just fill up the trade with picks. I, I don't care if y'all think y'all are contenders. Y'all won't anymore when I offer you all these picks. Come on, come on, work with me, work with me. I'll throw y'all four first. You know, we'll even throw in a fifth because we just have so many that it doesn't even matter for real. And they're still going to say no. So I guess poor Zingas is off the table for us. Who else is out there? Oh, Bam. Bam's usually pretty easy to get in the world of 2k let me see if i can even do a trade finder no i can't all right well then we can make something on our own i'll do ob Toppin, a first rounder i'll throw y'all two first they're still gonna say no that's fine i'll throw y'all another first they still say no that's fine i got another one oh y'all still don't want to do it that's fine i got another one and they're still not gonna do it okay it's gonna be harder than i thought to get a center Bro, Sangoon's barely got any value. He's only three and a half star. We're definitely going to be able to get him. And it's going to be based on a trade package centered around Andre Drummond. This is going to be the greatest finesse in NBA history. Boom. Welcome to the team, Sangoon. We also got Jalen Duran, who we're running at the four right now. We're good in the starting lineup, I think. We'll have DeJounte be our backup shooting guard. Walker Kessler be our backup center. Obi Toppin will be our backup small forward. Tyus Jones will be our backup point guard. So all we really need is a decent backup shooting guard. And we should pretty much be in business here and looking at who's available you know what we, we might just try to trade for brandon miller just just for funsies you know what i mean uh yeah they don't even value him too crazy over in charlotte so we'll do two first rounders they say no i'll throw y'all another first rounder they still say no all right i got another one with y'all's name on it come on come on i know i know the fifth one is about to get it done i know the fifth one's about to get it done oh it, it doesn't okay I, i'm getting a little cocky here all right all right i'll throw y'all uh you know what i would throw y'all tyus jones i don't want to give as many picks if i'm doing tyus jones they're gonna say no still i'll throw y'all another first they still say no i'll throw y'all one more okay brandon miller's a lot harder to get than i uh anticipated but we do get him now that means oh shoot i don't want to keep uh simulating but that means that we don't really have a backup point guard and we only got one more pick left oh shoot i might have cooked this can we at least get like a serviceable pg we can get we, we can get christian wood i guess and then we could trade wood maybe for a point guard uh, hopefully that that's what i'm hoping for i might got i might have got it in a little bit over my head making all these trades trading away draft picks like there was no tomorrow we can get vucevic who will who will add to the team and then we'll take vooch and we can probably get somebody who can play point guard for us d -Lo. perfect perfect we get d -Lo. that's awesome all right now our team looks pretty nice we got too many shooting guards oh because we already had a uh, Dejounte to run the back up too oh shoot uh well how, how can we uh maneuver this let, let me see let me see where we're at we need a power forward actually we don't need another uh shooting guard but i don't really want to trade brandon miller so what we could do is maybe move top into the four and then have brandon miller play the three and that solves our problem okay great yeah th this is a nice team all 80 plus is in the rotation some good stars and hopefully we can win this chip season is wrapped and i don't think we finished off as the number one seed oh wait we did yeah because we won 24 in a row to end off the year oh my goodness dude i mean it just makes sense when you put together a team like this that you win that many games but it, it doesn't really take out how crazy that is 
Oh. Yo. <laughs> yo, yo, I was getting so cocky. It's crazy, you know, when you put together a team like this, you win 24 in a row. Woohoo, you know, I'm the greatest GM of all time. Yeah, shut up, dude. <laughs> We, we got cooked. We got cooked. I, I simulated round on confidently. I was like, oh, yeah, we're winning the championship. <laughs> we, we got cooked. Okay, we're going to bring back these guys on team options. We got the qualifying offer on uh, Sangoon. Bird rights. It's just Sangoon, though. So that, that's literally, he's the only guy we got to bring back, and, and we can just run it back. So it'll be fine. But that that's hilarious, the way that things uh, ended up going down. Oh, can I bring back Brunson? Yeah, psych. Y'all really thought, y'all really thought I want to bring him back we'll sign somebody else for moral support we'll bring in josh richardson and yeah that, that's how we're gonna run it we'll, we'll be good but I, and i think once we simulate the full year everybody progresses and everything it's all gonna be fine but that, that's hilarious that we lost oh my gosh this team is incredible i'm not trying to gas myself up but but actually i'm trying to gas myself up this, this team is nice we're, we're gonna go win the championship this year and if we don't I, i'm a fraud i think i, I think that's uh pretty much the conclusion that i've come to oh i thought this was our team for a second i thought i lost all my players somehow i was like well what is this uh, summer league team we got going on right now? But let's go win the chip, man. Man, today's going pretty well. It's only 2.30. I've just posted a main channel video that's off to a pretty solid start, and I think it's going to pick up more based on the analytics I'm looking at. I think the video's going to do well there. I'm almost done with this video, and like I said, it's only 2.30, so I'll be able to go to the gym, maybe chill with my friends later in the day. I think overall it's going to be a great day, man. Let me know. Are y'all back at school yet? I'm starting back uh, next week, starting next week. So, uh, you know, yeah, y'all know how it is, man. It's going to be... It's going to be tough to start back, especially after a nice little time off, a nice little break. And it's been cool. Like I've talked about before, it's been cool to just be locked in on the content stuff. Kind of have this be my, uh, I, I guess you could say, full-time job or little little winter break job type thing. This was all I really did over winter break besides, you know, chill with the family, friends. You know, it was a great time overall to reset, but also be locked in, you know, if that makes any sense. Like, I got to reset from all the school stuff and got to lock in on the content stuff stuff bro i'm trying to grab my computer charger as i'm recording this y'all probably hear a bunch of stuff shuffling in the background my computer's about to die and i'm recording this off of obs i think i found it though there it is yeah y'all might have heard uh some stuff moving in the background but yeah I i'm excited for uh the future of the channel and everything in 2024 not only this channel but the main channel danny 2k i've talked about this a little bit before but the goal for this year on this channel is 20,000 subscribers and over on the danny 2k channel we're going for 100k man it it's gonna be tough I'm gonna have to be locked in this year if I want to hit 100k but if, I mean man let me let me tell you how much it would mean to me it, it's just oh my gosh man I had to pause the recording just so I could gather my thoughts real quick I mean I, I've been I've like dreamed of since a kid like seeing that YouTube plaque in person with with my channel name on it bro th there would be no feeling like it like I really do believe that if I see it in person with, with my YouTube channel name on it and everything bro I'll probably shed a tear I'm, I'm not gonna lie to y'all I'll probably shed a tear because I, I just love YouTube love making the content and I put a lot of time into it and obviously you know m maybe a hundred thousand isn't it isn't the biggest to some other people but man I mean the community I have right now it is incredible so imagine having such a huge community on YouTube. That's a hundred thousand people, bro. Think about it. Most NBA stadiums, what they maybe seat twenty thousand. Think about five NBA stadiums of people subscribe to you. Like right now, I got a full stadium of people subscribed over on the main channel. On this channel, we got three over three thousand subscribed. Think about that many people like physically with you. That that's how many people it is, and that that's insane to me that that many people tune into the videos. I think you can get wrapped up in the numbers on the screen and trying to get a get each video to get more views than the last or whatever oh they changed the shot clock because uh no way luke only averaged 20 that sucks they they definitely changed the shot clock but anyway uh yeah if y'all don't know what i'm talking about you go over here lee history rule changes where is it uh rule change history yeah they changed shot clock to 30 seconds i'll change that back in the off season if we need to because we're probably going to win this year and i'll wrap up the video but yeah, man, for anybody else who makes content, uh, if you're watching this video, oh, we got LA again. Don't let them beat us. No, no, they're our worst enemy. They're our worst enemy. How, how do they do this? How, how, how did they do this? Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my gosh. How, how do they keep doing this? How, how do they do it? 
th this doesn't make sense. But um, yeah, for anybody else out there who makes content or anything, uh, let, let me know if y'all can relate. You know, just you you kind of want the numbers to go up and everything. You don't really uh, you don't really think about how crazy it is the achievements that you've already reached. Like like I said, I understand I'm not the the biggest YouTuber on on the planet or anything, but I mean it's incredible the amount of people that watch the videos and mess with me. And, and deep down, like I'm I'm so serious, like. It, it means so much to me. Oh my gosh, we're over the hard cap. Oh, that's that's bad. That that's ugly. That, that's not good. Okay, H how do we get under the hard cap? I'm not quite sure. We could just bank on uh, Walker and Duran accepting their qualifying offers, which they'll probably do because they really don't have any other choice. D'Lo is gonna go, which. I mean, you know, he's kind of a big loss, but we should be all right. I'm worried about Duran and Kessler. I know they'll let me go over the hard cap to match offers if they get them. So I'm just going to keep simulating and hope that they don't get any offers and I can just accept the qualifying and we'll move from there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just just don't get any offers, y'all. Just don't get any more offers. Qualifying offer. Okay, we're, we're good. We're good. It was a close call, but the team still remains together. Let, let's win this championship, man. We got this. I might try to do a trade at the deadline or something just to shake it up a little bit. But yeah, continuing what I was talking about, uh, I think that YouTube now... Oh, I forgot to change the shot clock! Oh, you doofus! Uh, but yeah, I think that YouTube now has turned so much into a, a game almost... Or not even a game, more of a competition where people, they, they see it as a, as a future career, which, you know, is great that, that YouTube can employ people and provide people with uh, the means to survive and put a roof over their heads and everything. That's all great. But what it also does is it makes people be so competitive to the point where they're they're just trying to do everything for the algorithm and you know get the best uh metrics on their videos and everything and yes that's important if you're a youtuber to look at the metrics but i, I just think that sometimes people get too wrapped up into it and maybe that's what you got to do if you want to be a professional youtuber for the next 20 years or whatever but i i mean and i definitely get into the analytics a little bit because I feel like it's important, but I think I'll get what I'm saying. There's some people who take it crazy, crazy serious. And there's a lot of people who are very successful doing that. Don't get me wrong. They know what they're doing. And because they know what they're doing, they do very well at what they do. What did J. Cole say? You just got to come through and do it to the level that you do it. But but yeah, you just got to... Uh, some people really, really know what they're doing and can do this stuff at a high level. So, you know, props to them and they're, they're great at what they do. But so, somebody like me, I, I don't have the patience to edit a video for three, four days and put hours into an edit that's going to take that's going to last 30 seconds on the screen. I personally, that that's not me and props to the people who can do it. It's just not me. Like I told y'all, I, I, my favorite part of the whole YouTube process is recording, man. Editing. Oh, I, it's my least favorite part of the process. So being able to do a channel like this, where I come on here, I chill, I make the content, I post the video and we call it a day. That, that's incredible. It, it's the best feeling ever. So that, that's what I really like to do. I like to make these type of videos for y'all. So, and obviously the main channel content's super fun as well. Sometimes the editing can be a bit boring, but I, I like making some ideas and some different NBA scenarios that I have in my mind. Uh, come true i guess is what is the word i'm looking for but yeah I, I love doing those type of things as well over on the main channel but what, what i'm saying is if i had a video like oh okay for example y'all know how med does those crazy videos with the great editing they're so much fun to watch man i tune into pretty much every single video me and my little brother were just watching one earlier today right but you know how those videos take a crazy amount of time i'm sure man i, I just can never have the patience so props to the people who do that stuff obviously med's doing incredible Incredible things if y'all don't know him I mean check out his content man it's incredible stuff but I could just never have the patience to do stuff like that maybe it's my Gen Z terrible attention span or whatever but I I just can't like I, I can sit down and spend a lot of time doing other things but whew, man editing for that much time it's just not me Anyway, we're almost at the end of the season. Maybe that makes me lazy, like I'm saying, but <laughs> it's just it's just not my thing. I love being being involved with the audience and like recording and stuff. That that's my favorite part of the whole content creation process. Being able to speak on here, being able to talk to y'all, being able to get to know y'all through the comment section. That that's what I love about YouTube for real. Anyway, we're at the end of the season. We finish off as the number one seed. I, if we lose this year, I'll change the shot clock. No way the Lakers come out the plane again. No way. Okay. 
Okay, thank goodness. I think we'll be okay because we don't have to face the Lakers. Oh my gosh, we almost lost. Round two, we got the Mavericks. We beat them. Conference finals, we got OKC. We beat them, and we're in the finals. Man, I don't know why the first round has been such a hurdle for us these past couple seasons, but now we got the Heat, D Fox, Tyler Hero, Tatum. Really good team, but hopefully we can take them down. Game number one goes to us. We're up two to zero. We're up three to zero, and finally we get that championship, man. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. If you did enjoy, please be sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.